Hi again, and I've seen some interesting attitudes developing in the world around me, particularly in the vaccination camps. There's the group that says everybody has to be vaccinated, and there's the group saying you have no right to tell me what to do with my body. And I would say there's problems with both of those ideas. In the first place, the whole real science of vaccination was to protect the vaccinated, and those who choose not to be vaccinated, well, they're the ones putting themselves at risk. They are not putting other people at risk, regardless of how they've twisted the science to say that to you and to get everybody all concerned and fearful about the unvaccinated. The unvaccinated are not your enemy. And yet, among the vaccinated, that is the narrative they have chosen to believe. And so what I see is I see the results. So among the unvaccinated, I see an attitude that says live and let live. And among the vaccinated, I see if they don't do what I want, they should be killed, literally killed. I've seen that attitude expressed in those terms many, many times. I'd like to shoot that guy. I'd like to, I'd like that guy to just die. I want all those unvaccinated, all those people that are anti-vaxxers to just die and go away. This is not the language of open-minded people. This is not the language of a free people. This is a language of a group of people who have been convinced by tyranny that some agenda other than freedom is more important. And as Benjamin Franklin once famously said, that a country that would choose safety over freedom deserves neither. They will get neither. The government cannot and will not ever be able to guarantee your safety. In the last week, I've seen the reports that the coronavirus has now jumped to a living animal population that uh, at least in, in principle should be easily transmittable back to humans. And therefore, because it is now in the wild animal population, there is no way that science will ever get rid of COVID as a scourge. So what is this? Well, in Michigan, in particular, is where the largest population has been discovered. We've seen that a huge number of the white-tailed deer are now carrying the coronavirus. And because of that, that is horrible news for all of the scientists involved because it means they cannot control this. They cannot go out. They can't vaccinate the deer. They can't do the things that are going to keep the virus um, at bay, even. And so this jump is like God putting his seal on it and saying, I'm not going to let you solve this problem without me. We have said, oh, we can just do this. If we can just get a certain amount of the population vaccinated against it, we can stamp out the virus. It's not possible any longer. And everyone needs to know that. This is not a virus that is ever going to be completely gone. It's going to be in a population and it's going to continue to infect people because it can't even be stopped in, a, in the homo sapiens. It can't be done. Now that you've got this problem, we look back at the animal testing that was done and we look back at how did this ever happen. And we see that ferrets were used because they have a, a receptor that is really um, open to receiving this virus and behaving much like a human receptor and getting the virus and so the initial things were done on the the uh, ferrets and then it uh, sort of got into animals through the mink which is a close cousin to the ferret and uh, it was confined to farms for a long time so we still had good hope that we could contain this virus and so we destroyed mink populations and did all that and then suddenly they found a mink in the wild just one that had the virus and now they didn't know. I mean, you can't capture all the wild animals and know that, yeah, you got it all and there's only one that have it. But they only found it in one, and so they were hopeful still that perhaps that mink had come into contact with the farmed mink, and that's how it got the virus, and they hoped that they'd stopped it and nipped it in the bud. But now that it's hit the deer population, and the last number I heard was like 40% of the Michigan deer population has the virus, it's like way beyond control. So... Either the vaccines work or they don't work. There's a very common understanding among epidemiologists that you cannot vaccinate your way out of the middle of a pandemic. You can vaccinate before it starts and, 
and you can protect a certain number of people, but you'll never vaccinate your way out of a pandemic. And all the people who know something, all the people who invented the process, the guy who invented the, the adjuvants to put in vaccines, the guy who invented the mRNA style of vaccine, all these people are recommending that people do not get vaccinated, yet this is the narrative you never hear. The people who really know, they're dismissed, but all the lower level, all the people who like, oh yeah, we understand, we know the science. Are you kidding me? They don't know the science at all, but they're feeding you a narrative on best case scenarios outlined in scientific papers. A good example of this is the latest report from the CDC, which has a glowing uh, vaccine efficacy summary on the front. But if you open it up and you look at the data, what you see is that the vaccine prevents everything except death from COVID. What? Yeah, exactly the same statistical numbers of deaths from the vaccinated and deaths from the unvaccinated from COVID right now. So the data that they're claiming by their front cover shows the glowing, wonderful effectiveness of the vaccine. When you open it up and you look at the data, it does not support their conclusions. But we read the conclusions, we read the headlines, and we think, well, that's, that's wonderful, it's working fine. Is it? Open the machine, open the, open the data and have a look. What you'll see that out of the thousands of people in the test groups, there were 15 deaths among the unvaccinated and 14 among the vaccinated from the same thing, from COVID-19. So with that in mind, you look at it and say, well, how can you reach these conclusions when there's zero statistical difference between the two numbers? That's a really good question, but it's one that nobody's willing to ask or nobody's willing to allow you to know that there are questions. Oh no, we know, we're gonna read the headline and we're gonna tell you that it's effective. Maybe it is. I think the jury is out. And I think we've been led to believe and to trust a narrative from people that we know have been lying to us. And that's a problem. Think for yourself and love you. Talk to you later.